Hey, it's Greg from the Afternoon Drive Show back here at the Kissing Country Soundstage. I'm with Jesse Mast. Welcome, my friend. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. So two seconds ago, and I usually come into these things pretty prepared, but you kind of threw me off because you said, what do you want to talk about? And I just randomly threw out the word pigs, and your eyes lit up with hearts. <laughs> I've never seen something like this happen before. Can you explain your fascination with pigs? This just happened. So I have to understand this. Um, well, about a month ago, a friend of mine sent me a bunch of pictures via email of teacup pigs. And, no, have you seen these things? They are the cutest thing in the world. I'm completely smitten. So if you're ever wondering about gifts to bring to Jesse on the road when we're catching you in concert, we're seeing you backstage, you're thinking a teacup pig would really do the trick. Well, right before Valentine's Day, too. Now I'm going to have a farm in my green room. Oh, but you would love that. Just instead of a money pit to jump into, a it bit would of be teacup amazing. pigs. It would just be the best. So other than teacup pigs, I was kind of curious. Uh, you're a young guy. You're 19. Yeah. How did you get your start into music in general? What started your love for this this business? And Well, my family has always been really into music, and so that kind of rubbed off on me. I'm a bit of a musical mutt. Like, I was exposed to a bajillion different genres as a kid. Grew up predominantly on classical and classic rock, but um, but my family's always, always into all sorts of different kinds of music. And so growing up in that... I always had a passion for it. Now, I didn't always want to be a musician. As a kid, I wanted to be an NHL goalie. Well, which, who didn't? I know. It's right? like every blue-blooded okay, Canadian who was, who was your goalie that you looked up to? Who was on the poster on your wall? Oh, Bill Ranford. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. That's why we love you here in Kissing Country. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, um, and so, yeah. no. It, but when it became very apparent that I had no future as an athlete. It's sad I, as, a, as a hockey guy, isn't it? When you realize everybody else is getting good and you're still not. Yeah, it was, well, and, and as a goalie too, because the pucks were getting harder and <laughs> I was getting slower. So, <laughs> yeah, so it was, it, stage. it was, so, um, but my rebound was music. I picked up a guitar for the first time four years ago and I've been singing for even less than that, but it's been such a, such an amazing journey for me. And, um, learning the ins and outs of what's become my passion. But is this right? Your family had a band? Is that a thing? Well, actually, my great-grandfather and all of his kids played in a band together called the Family Five. I still have the old PA system from, like, the 1950s. It doesn't work at all anymore. But they used to play, like, old Ukrainian polkas and bluegrass. And, yeah, no, it's pretty cool. So you're kind of going through this musical journey, and you said classical and classic rock and stuff like that. What drew you in to the country scene? The first time I ever heard Garth Brooks sing The River. It was Beautiful song. A, a right. And so having grown up on ACDC and Zeppelin and <laughs> and then on the other hand, Chopin and Paganini, I the first time I heard that song, what struck me most was the melodies and the lyrics, how they work together to tell a story, the way I'd, I'd never heard before in, in a song. And so that really grabbed me. And then, um, and, and so that... That was kind of what started me down the path to where I am today. So you start with Garth Brooks, and you're going through this winding journey. Who is it now that you're looking up to, and maybe in the Canadian country music scene or anywhere, and you're thinking, that's that's somebody that I want to be? Because I know you are kind of big into Paul Brand. You freaked out when you met him the first time, right? I, Well, inwardly. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah. told Paul that, he'd probably be like, what? But it, Paul's since become a friend. and uh, But meeting somebody that has had a huge influence on my music and somebody that I've admired, not just as an artist, but as a person for so long was truly humbling. So Paul, and you were just on tour with Gord Bamford, is that right? Yeah, that's true. We did a small theater tour through Ontario and I opened for him with just a stomp box and my guitar. And it was really weird um, for a kid. I was born and raised in Edmonton. Um, and so Edmonton born, but I've been living in Vernon, BC and Salmon Arm kind of back and forth between the two for the last nine years. So I've gotten a bit of the small town kid gene in me too, and it's weird to be playing for an audience that's actually listening. Sure, absolutely. That was yeah. that was totally new for me, and for the first couple of shows, I didn't know what to do with it. I was just like, <laughs> "Oh my, oh my word! You guys are actually paying attention. What do I tell you?" You're used to the bar scene where everybody's kind of doing their own thing. Oh uh, yeah, and- you could you could be up there reciting poetry, and they'd all just be like, "What's he doing?" <laughs> Ah, whatever. <laughs> so, Gord, what did you learn from being on tour with Gord and seeing him on stage every night? And Gord, uh, and especially, especially Gord, but the band he plays with as well, they are consummate professionals. Not only as musicians, but just as uh, just in their craft. And so, I being around them, that I'm just hoping that some of that's kind of rubbing off on me, and uh, and that one day I'll get to the point where 
you know, you, you just like they just got this. They they walk out on stage with no trepidation whatsoever. But I mean, Gord had to start somewhere. Paul Brandt did. Uh, Garth Brooks did. All these people that you looked up to, and this is kind of your big breakout moment. You got this first single, "Bad Blood." Tell us about it. Um, this first single, it's uh, it was a song that was pitched to us a little while back from a fantastic songwriter out of Nashville by the name of Matt Rogers. And uh, the first time we heard it, we absolutely fell in love with the song and knew we had to cut it. And so we've been working it and reworking it, and recording, re-recording, remastering, and finally we've got this song. We're really proud of it. What did you fall in love with with the song? Was it the message? Um... Well, considering it's a heart-wrenching breakup song, it wasn't the message. <laughs> but, um, but no, it was, it, like, I mean, it kind of goes back to my roots in rock and roll. Uh, it's, it's, it appeals to that side of me, just the melodies of it. But then also, it's just a fun song to play. Like, it's one of those songs you go out, just rock out, and have a great time. <laughs> awesome. We are just minutes away now from hearing Bad Blood from Jesse Mass. Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, thank you, man.